So first of all, I just want to ask, how are you really? I'm good. Um, yeah, I mean, when I say good, uh, I'm doing all right with all the ups and downs and challenges that, you know, life's thrown at us all. And um, mm. yeah, I think one of the things I'm starting to see is, you know, these challenges and the unknowns are inevitable part of life. And um, being good is kind of accepting that you're going to feel not so good sometimes. So, yeah, I guess when I say good, I mean, yeah, like all good with all the feelings. <laughs> yeah, because I think a lot of people, they ask that question and then the automatic response is just, oh, yeah, I'm fine. When a lot of people actually aren't fine or they've really been struggling. So I quite like actually hearing how people are when they really think about it more. But obviously there's so much going on in the world. Um, a lot of people are struggling with their mental health at the moment. And what, how did you get on during the, the lockdown when it was kind of at its worst? Yeah, um, I, I did find it challenging, um, you know, being sort of like almost, you get, I feel humans, we get really used to like a bit of a routine and we kind of like, we, we have a preference to sort of things going the way that we're, we're familiar with. And uh, when things sort of change fairly drastically, like being kind of locked down and not, you know, going to where you usually go in terms of like your workplace or being around the people that you usually be around or that sort of routine. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I found it challenging. Um, yeah, and, and I guess one of, one of the things I struggled with was um, work. Like I, I found it difficult to know when to switch off. Um, mm. And I found that I needed to recognize that in order to be able to like say, now it's time to stop and have a break and actually like, you know, interact with my my wife and you know take the dogs out for a walk and you know these types of things um because there wasn't i guess that set boundary or routine around work stuff so yeah that that to me was really challenging and, and i think you know like being locked in on a screen or on emails or on zoom calls all day is it's not that good for you you know so mm. i i found it quite challenging yeah yeah and obviously you've come from a rugby background so you're probably used to being active the majority of the day as well so I bet that was really tough yeah that was tough and you know what like I don't think it was something that I registered um mm. until probably a few months in as to how much effect it was having on me not having that routine uh that exercise routine because because rugby's been my career for the last 13 years exercise um, and, and, you know, quite rigorous exercise was just part of what I did every day. Uh, and then when that wasn't given to me in my routine, I was still, uh, when lockdown started, I was still working out and I found my, in my mindset, like I was doing my gym and a bit of running and stuff because I was like, oh, we'll be back to rugby soon. So I kind of had an idea of what I was motivated for. But then when I kind of started to lose sight that we would go back to rugby when the kind of lockdowns prolong, I found myself being less and less motivated to exercise. But I didn't really click that that was having an effect on me, like my moods and my feeling. Um, and when I did, I started to realize, actually, I need to prioritize. Because before I didn't have to prioritize exercise because it was just part of my job. Mm -hmm. But throughout the lockdowns and when it's changing without having rugby, I was like, I actually need to make sure I schedule and make a time to exercise because it helps me feel like uh, to release energy and have more yeah, balance. Yeah, so much better. Mm. Yeah, that's so interesting that it didn't really clock with you until a while later. Yeah. Would you um, mind sharing a bit about your journey with mental health? Yeah, I mean, um, I I think 
the first time I really started to consider and, and kind of look into mental health and, and just well-being and was when I, I started to kind of ask questions about what was motivating me and like, like where I thought my happiness was coming from. Um, and how that looked to me was when I was sort of in high school and younger, I really wanted to become a professional rugby player. Um, and I, I think there was a point in my mind that I, like what I loved, the game that I played, that I really enjoyed, um, it became an idea in my mind of this is what's going to make me worthwhile. You know, if I achieve being a professional, that to me is what like success looks like, you know? Um, and, and I think with that viewpoint, it became like my identity got caught up in my career. Um, mm. But when I achieved some of my goals, like I got my first professional contract, um, I was playing rugby uh, for the team that I'd grown up loving and supporting and I was on TV and I was getting paid and I I, I had this weird um, sort of unease around like I wasn't feeling better about myself within like mentally and my well-being. Don't get me wrong, I was excited about being a rugby player and achieving some of my goals and stuff, but I didn't feel better about myself. And to me, that caused a lot of like uncertainty. Like, well, what I put everything in this to try and achieve this, but I don't feel better. How am I ever going to feel better about myself? Mm. And I, and it was a bit of a journey, like, and a lot of ups and downs, but I started to, through that kind of questioning, see that, from my perspective, putting our value and identity and the, the idea of feeling fulfilled in anything kind of outward, like a career, a relationship, finances, um, you know, any of these type of things, what I came to see is it was, it was actually a really kind of shaky foundation because there was no yeah. lasting happiness and outward thing. So I started to more explore like kind of different, I guess I became really interested in it. I was like, but I just want to feel content, you know? Uh, and I don't want to rely on having to win a rugby game or having to make sure that my team signs me and I earn this amount of money or the fans think I'm a good player or whatever. Because to me, that was impossible to maintain that consistently and obviously you can't maintain it for the rest of your life because mm. you can't play rugby as a career the, for your whole life. So I was like, that to me is a shaky starting point for my well-being. So I actually began, I started reading different books, like different philosophies, you know, um, some of them were kind of like more psychological. Others were sort of quite more like spiritual or philosophical. And this started to help me kind of like mold my perspective on where happiness came from. Um, and yeah, like some of the ones that kind of impacted me the most positively were sort of like, I guess some of the more like spiritual or philosophical viewpoints, almost like like but like Buddhism and, and things like that, mm -hmm. where I wasn't really exploring them in a way where I thought I was becoming like a Buddhist or like, uh, you know, wanting to kind of look at myself as a spiritual person. But the bits I liked were these reminders about like the present moment is all we have, you know, if if you ever are looking for happiness or fulfillment in the future, you're looking in the wrong place. Mm. And, and I kind of started to see that in life, ups and downs are, are actually really inevitable, but our minds start to like try to create a path of only good things. And that leads us down a almost trouble, troublesome path. Cause it's not possible to live a life of only good things, you know, like mm. I, I don't, I don't want to kind of come across too negative, but an example is like, it's inevitable that people are going to die, you know, like loved ones are going to die. Like it's inevitable that life is going to throw you curveballs that we didn't plan for, like the, these lockdowns and things like that. Mm. So when I started to learn that, like you can't rely on the future or the outward things 
for happiness, then I, that's when I was like, actually, it's not life that's making me unhappy or affecting my well-being. It's my perspective of life. And when I began mm. to shift that through learning, that yeah, I think it really helped me a lot. Yeah, that's so interesting and so true because even looking on social media and things like that, if you're comparing yourself to others' highlights real, you're probably always thinking that life is meant to be like so good. There's so much good going on when actually there is also so much going on behind closed doors as well. Um, so actually accepting, yeah, that like bad things do happen <laughs> and it is ine inevitable. It's okay to feel down you're mm. like there's something wrong with me and i need to fix myself now I, I i went through that but i didn't realize i was trying to fix myself by escaping the feelings mm. you know and, and um part of that escape like i said was like drinking too much and trying to avoid those feelings um so yeah most definitely like i have faced really sad and down and troubling times and they were actually made worse by me not accepting that that's part of life yeah. and trying to escape them. Um, so yeah, there, there was some real pretty dark times for me, that's for sure. Mm. Yeah, and I guess in a rugby environment as well, that must have been quite hard with the whole drinking issue because that is quite a drinking like laddie culture so maybe it goes unnoticed or it can kind of be passed as quite normal when actually you were really struggling inside did yeah definitely like um i i think what was tough was like i was making excuses in my own mind around what i was doing you know i was in my mind i was like oh i'm just having fun you know but mm -hmm go very quickly from having fun to looking to have fun too option or too often and then it's like but why am i always looking to do that and if you really ask if i was to really have asked myself it it was no longer that fun i was just trying to escape bad feelings with the excuse of this is fun you know um and you know like for example drinking and that like it's not the alcohol is not the problem. It's your viewpoint of why you're drinking, you know? Yeah. Because someone can go and have a few drinks with their friends and it's, it's a really nice, cool social thing. But it's when you go into drinking with the view to escape something, I think it can become quite a dangerous thing or it can become addictive or you drink too much and then bad things happen and all that. So, but you're right, like, when it's part of a kind of almost like a bit of a culture you make excuses in your mind to be like this is normal you know and it actually got to the point where some of my family members they were like like come on man like you're getting into trouble now like you're drinking too often and this is affecting your rugby your career like obviously you you know you're gonna you're getting into trouble um and obviously just your own well-being but I was pushing people away because I was denying the fact of what was going on until it, until I actually accepted it for myself. And I was like, no, you're right. Um, so no, definitely it, it, it was another kind of hurdle or challenge when it's part of that culture. And it makes it more difficult for you to identify it yourself, you know? Um, advice would you give to someone who is struggling right now and does I think if I was able to sit there and speak to someone that was having a tough time, I would say, like, you, you're you all good. Like, you've got this. You know, mm. it's absolutely normal to have a really challenging and difficult time in life. And it's not, it's not going to last forever, you know. Um, and do your best to look and see what, is in front of you in this very moment because often when we're having a tough time the mind i feel has a habit to like look into the future and try to figure everything mm -hmm. out and then it can actually lead to more feelings of uncertainty or anxiousness and we almost add layers of stress on top of what's already a bad yeah. feeling right now so just 
be open and see your friends, tell them how you're feeling, talk to your family, let them know like, I'm, I'm having a real tough time right now. This is how I'm feeling. Um, but know that like, my biggest thing is I want people to know that there's not something wrong with you for feeling that way. Yeah. You know, like if, if you can see that in, in the bigger picture, you've got this, you know, you don't need to like fix yourself or, or over calculate what's going on. You know, um, that to me is the best step to seeing more clearly. Cause I think that in order to kind of progress our way through things, it's like seeing one step in front of us at a time, um, to see life more clearly is, is the best way to go about it.